Hello saints and future saints. Today we're going to talk about judging others. And uh, you know, we continuously hear people say, judge not, lest ye be judged. And the, ma the majority of times, you know, this statement comes out of the mouths of those who've never really seen this verse in the Bible. And the majority of them most likely never even read the Bible. But like so many of the lost, they choose and pick God's words to fit their own definition, allowing themselves to do whatever they see fit, creating their own gods, you know, those gods who let them do whatever they want without a price to pay, okay? And I've seen even atheists who claim that there's no God turn around and say, judge not, lest ye be judged. Now that's interesting for many reasons. You know, they claim God doesn't exist, yet they quote his words you know that's confusion beyond confusion compounded so let's take a look at God's Word and what it does say versus what man thinks it says okay now in order to understand scripture we have to follow the rule of right division keeping things in context asking questions of who what when where how you know these types of questions to get to the real meaning of what's being said now, before we read the famous Judge Not passage, let me say that there's places in the Bibles where we're told to judge, and then there's other places in the Bible where we're told not to judge, okay? And does this mean that the Bible is contradicting itself? Not at all. The answer lies within the context, specifically the context within the dispensations found in God's Word. So, God speaks to certain people at certain times under certain circumstances not everything God says in his word is to us today you know and it, and it may be there for our learning but it's not specifically to us today and here in this topic of judge not it's a prime example first let's start out with uh, God's word that tells us not to judge others in Romans 14 4 who art thou that judgest another man's servant to his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Now here in Paul's letter, he's talking about one believer judging another believer, okay? In the next verse, Romans 14.10, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, we see one believer versus another believer. In Romans 14, 12 and 13, So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now, reading these three passages, it seems from what Paul is writing that we're not to judge our brothers or sisters. Our only judge is our Lord God, and we'll all face our own judgment when we're before the judgment seat of, of Christ one day soon. So what exactly is going on here? One place it says not to judge, and another place it says that we're actually going to be judges. We're going to judge the nations, okay? So let's look at Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in the brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to, to the brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Okay, what this verse is saying and what it's not saying. It's not telling us not to judge. What it is telling us is to judge ourselves first before judging others. It's giving us a rule to follow when it comes to judging, okay? In fact, the Bible tells us that men who are spiritual and have wisdom will judge others. In 1 Corinthians 2.15, But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. In Psalms 37, 28, For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. 
they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Now notice in the following verses that Paul rebukes the Corinthians for not judging. He goes on to say, believers have the authority to judge other people. Paul tells us that we'll have the job of judging even the angels at the white throne judgment. In 1 Corinthians 6, 2, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that ye that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? Now, one of the biggest reasons there is no peace in the world today, and there seems to be more corruption than justice, is because people don't judge others fairly or righteously. You know, the game seems to be rigged, and it's, it leads to unfair judgment. Thus, it, it causes chaos and disruption. Look here at Isaiah and what he says about this. Isaiah 59, 8. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Now, when we judge, we're to judge by Scripture and Scripture alone, not by our opinions or traditions. Okay, think about it. If someone judges you by what the Bible says, then really the person who's judging you is God himself judging you by his own word. Okay, look at this. Isaiah 8.20 To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, let's be honest. Okay, all of us, at one time or another, we're in the position where we wanted to quote Matthew 7 because we're judged. When we're judged, it hurts our pride. Okay? Now, dear saint, as a child of God, learn to take rebuke, especially when it's backed up by Scripture. Throw your pride and your feelings out the window and let God speak to your heart. Okay? Sometimes God will have another saint confront you, not to hurt you, but to instruct you, to help you grow, or perhaps to prevent you from doing something in, in error, okay? Or hurting others or you know it's not always a bad thing to be rebuked most times it's God trying to teach us something and other times it also could be the enemy trying to throw uh, you know blocks in our path so we have to discern what's going on in Proverbs 10 17 he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction but he that refuseth repuf, re, reproof erreth now if you pout at scripture reproof it shows your immaturity in Christ Jesus it reveals your pride and it slows down your growth in Proverbs 12 1 whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge but he that hateth reproof is brutish Proverbs 13 18 poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored now if you want understanding accept reproof God's Word says to hear uh, re and to rebuke is to be wise in, Provo in Proverbs 15 32 he that refuseth instruction despiseth, despiseth his own soul but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding in Ecclesiastes 7 5 it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools you know we're called to rebuke people with this scripture 2 Timothy, Timothy 4 2 Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In Titus 1.13 This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. When we judge, we judge with love and meekness in our hearts. In Galatians 6.1 Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. 2 Timothy 2.25 In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, 
if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Folks, the whole point behind judging other Christians shouldn't be about proving yourself right or them wrong, okay? It, it shouldn't be about embarrassing them in front of the world. The real reason to confront a brother or sister is to help them to get right now instead of them having to take these problems before God at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, I'd rather deal with my issues here on earth than have to drag all of my garbage in front of the Lord come judgment day. Wouldn't you? I, th I think you would. So in judging another saint, it should be out of love and out of concern for when, you know, they have to stand before our Savior one day soon. These are the reasons to reprove another saint out of love, okay? Not pride. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing manifest unto God, knowing there, I'm sorry, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Now, the fact is, if we spent more time judging ourselves, we'd spend less time uh, getting judged by others. In 1 Corinthians 11.30, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now, God commands us not to hate our brothers and sisters, but to rebuke them when they sin. Not to hurt them, but to save them. You know, you're saving them from being destroyed, okay? Sin destroys the flesh. And it's out of love that we warn them. And if they agree concerning their sins, then we should forgive them without holding a grudge. In Leviticus 19.17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. It is scriptural to rebuke, exhort, reprove, and reveal those who may be doing something dangerous towards the saints. For example, if someone's spreading false teaching or lies, you know, in this case, it is correct to rebuke. And because, you know, it's be you're trying to protect your fellow brothers and sisters from all the wolves out there. Or, or from falling into the deception of the enemy. In 2 Timothy 4.14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. In John 1.19, uh, 3 John 1.19, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, and I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Now in conclusion, what I've done in my own life, in my own walk in Christ, okay, is to ask other saints, those who've uh, proven themselves to be good stewards of God's word, those who are mature in Christ, I ask them to keep me accountable, to keep me focused, to warn me when I'm slipping in one direction or another, okay, and they help me by keeping me accountable for what I say and do, and I do the same thing for them, out of love for one another, and are caring about each other, okay? And all our, our accounts before the Lord at all times. I suggest you do the same thing. If you haven't already, I suggest you pick out a Christian saint who is trustworthy, who is a good steward in God's word, and confront them and ask them to do you a favor and to hold you accountable in the things that you do. And do the same for them. In Proverbs 27.5, Open rebuke is better than secret love <clears throat> faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful in galatians 4:16 am i therefore become your enemy because i tell you the truth you know now in conclusion is it right to judge others absolutely but 
it has to, it, it's got to be with righteous judgment it has to be based on God's word and it must be out of love and not pride or you know or just the need to argue over things this is it's called it has to be righteous judgment okay after all our Lord God is a judge he's the judge above all judges and we can learn we can learn a lot from him you know all of us are gonna face judgment at some point in the future whether it's our judgment at the judgment seat of Christ or if it's for unbelievers at the white throne judgment everyone's gonna kneel before our Almighty God in judgment there's no escaping the Lord's judgment at all so with that friends thanks for studying with me Saints and I'll see you on my next video